Hello, this is Mr. Best. Welcome to Chapter 7, Closure Questions, 112 to 123. Question 112. Find an exponential function in y equals a times b raised to the x form that satisfies each of the following sets of conditions. So we'll start with question A. Has a y-intercept of 0, 2. This is important because it tells us that the initial value starts at 2. And a multiplier of 0, 0.8. And so on question A, it gives you all the information that you need to write the equation. So we will say y equals 2 times 0 0.8 raised to the x power. Part B passes through two points. Once again, on this one, it does give you the initial point. So we do know the A value is 3.5. And we are missing the B value. So we need to figure out what that is. We can use this ordered pair to find this, or we could set up a table as well. I'm going to go ahead and use the ordered pair and plug in the information I know. 31.5 is equal to A, which is 3.5. B, I don't know. And then raised to the X power. So we're going to go ahead and divide both sides by 3.5. And that will give us 9. So 9 is equal to B squared, where therefore B could equal 3. And so now that we have b equals 3 and a equals 3.5, we should be able to write the equation. y is equal to 3.5 times b, which is 3, raised to the x power. Now, remember, b could also equal negative 3 when we're solving the problem, but that's not going to work because our, x, our, our multiplier has to be greater than 0. So that's why negative 3 would not be an option for our equation. Question 113. Sam wants to create an arithmetic sequence and a geometric sequence, both of which have t of 1 equals 8 and t of 7 equals 512. Is this possible? If it is, help Sam create his sequences. If not, justify why not. So we definitely know we can create an arithmetic sequence. Arithmetic, remember, is linear. So two points forms a line. Uh, so with our arithmetic sequence, we have um, t and t of n. So I'm just going to kind of create a little table here so we can see some things. We don't know the initial. We know 1 is at 8, and then we don't know again until 7, which is 512. So if it is linear, then we can find the slope. We don't have to find the numbers in, in between. We can find the rate of change by finding the slope. So we can do a 512 minus 8, 7 minus 1. So this is 504 divided by 6. So the slope will be 84. And now that we know the slope, uh, we can find the initial. We can either work backwards or we can use uh, the point 1, 8 and the slope of 84 to be able to write the equation. I'm just going to use that. So 8 is equal to my slope 84 times x, which is 1, and then plus b. So I'll subtract 84, 84 times 1, I guess. I should probably do that first. That's 84. And then subtract 84 to both sides and that will be 76 or negative 76. So you could have also worked backwards from your table if you did create um, that table where you would subtract 70, or I'm sorry, subtract 84. So that means if it is arithmetic, we could write the equation t of n, since we are doing a sequence, is equal to the slope, which was 84. So 84n minus 76. And so that would be arithmetic. Now let's look at the potential of having a geometric sequence. So we still have the two points, and we still have, if we want to set up the table, <clears throat> uh, we don't know the initial. We know 1 is 8, and we know 7 is 512. So if we're going to be able to write an exponential or geometric sequence here, we have to figure out what that multiplier is. So 8 times b, how many times? Well, you got to get to the, the 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. It's going to be a total of 6 times. So 8b to the 6 is equal to 512. Divide by 8. And remember, the other way we can solve this is to set up a system of equations also. So we can do it either way. We can kind of work backwards from our table, or we can set up a system. So I got b to the 6th is equal to 64. So then we need to take the 6th root 
of 64 and b to the 6, and that'll give us b equals 2. So now we have the multiplier, we can work backwards, so we'd have to divide by 2 to work backwards, and that would give us the initial value of 4, and we have our b, so we have enough to write the equation, y equals 4 times 2 raised to the x power. And so that would be geometric. So it looks like Sam um, can create an arithmetic and a geometric sequence for both of these. And I just realized that I wrote it as an equation instead of a sequence, so let me fix that. should be t of n is equal to 4 times 2 raised to the n power. I just want to make sure I'm writing it as a sequence since that's what it asked for. So I went ahead and showed over here how you could um, solve this using systems in case that was your method of choice. Uh, so I set up my two systems, 8 equals AB raised to the first, and then 512 is equal to AB raised to the seventh. And then once I did my substitution, you can see right here, 512 is equal to 8B to the sixth, was the same thing that I had right here. So at that point, everything else works out um, really to be the same way. Once you find B, you'll plug it back in to find your A value as well. Question 114, write each expression below as an equivalent, equivalent expression without negative exponents. So if we remember about negative exponents, 3 raised to the negative 2 is equivalent to the reciprocal of the base. So 3, the reciprocal is 1 third, and then it's raised to the positive 2. So this would be 1 ninth. m to the negative fourth is 1 over m to the positive 4. Part C, 1 half raised to the negative 3. So we do the reciprocal of 1 half, which is 2. And then now it's raised to the positive 3, so that would be 8. And then on D, we have the fraction 3 over 5x raised to the negative 1. The reciprocal of that is 5x divided by 3 raised to the positive 1, which just simplifies to 5x divided by 3. Question 115, write each expression below in radical form and compute the value without using a calculator. So on part A, 8 raised to the 1 third is, we need to write it in radical form, so that's the same thing as the cube root of 8, and the cube root of 8, what number times itself 3 times gives you 8, and that would be 2. On B, we have 16 to the 3 fourths. So we're going to need to rewrite this so that we can evaluate this. We have 16. We can rewrite it uh, a couple of ways. We can do 1 fourth and then raise it to the third power, or we can do 16 raised to the third raised to the 1 fourth. We'll look at the difference between these two. So the first one is the fourth root of 16 and then cubing that, whereas the bottom one here, you have to take 16 to the third power and then the fourth root of that. Well, if I'm not able to use a calculator, then the one on the bottom would be very difficult to figure out. But the one on the top, the fourth root of 16, what number times itself four times gives you 16 would be 2, and then 2 to the third power is 8. The one on the bottom there, you'd probably have to use a calculator to evaluate it. And then part C, we have 125 raised to the four-thirds. So we'll rewrite that as 125 raised to the one-third first, so that we can evaluate it and then raise it to the fourth power. So that'll be the cube root of 125 raised to the fourth. The cube root um, of 125 is 5. 5 times 5 is 25. 25 times 5 is 125. And then we'd have to take 5 raised to the fourth power. Where you might need a calculator for this, it is 5 times 5 times 5 times 5. So these two give you 25 times 25. So that might help out. And that is going to give you an answer of 625. Question 116. Best price parking charges $2 for the first hour of parking and $0.50 cents for each additional hour. Create a step function graph that represents this information. So I went ahead and, and posted the graph on there so that you could see uh, what was happening. At time zero right here, okay, they're charging $2 for the first hour. So at time zero, um, you're not going to pay. So that's a... Right here, that's an open circle. You're not going to pay anything because you haven't parked yet. But once you start, it's going to be $2. Okay, it's $2 for the first hour. And then $0.50 cents for each additional hour. So once you get to your first hour, 
all right, it's going to be $2. But then right after that, you're going to pay an additional 50 cents. So it, um, between time 1 and 2, it'll be $2.50. But it's open once again here at 1 because it costs two dollars not 250 and then you'll see that step up at two dollar or two hours right when you get past two hours it's going to move up another 50 cents to three dollars so that's what the step function should look like make sure you label your x and y axes as well question 117 a share of abc stock was worth 60 dollars in 2005 and only worth 45 in 2010 find the multiplier and the percent decrease uh, we're going to be able to write an exponential function and then assuming the decline in value continues at the same rate Use your answer to make a prediction. So uh, first thing is we're given the initial stock at $60. Now, this initial time is actually in 2005, but we don't want to use the year 2005. We want to use the number zero because that's initially what the stock was worth in 2005. So then in 2010, five years later, it was 45. So once the multiplier, which means we're looking at exponential functions here, so back to how do we create and, and find what those things are so that we can answer and write the function. So we have the initial. We just don't have the, um, we don't have the multiplier. And this 5, by the way, is in 2010, just so we're clear. So I'm going to set up an equation. This would be 45 is equal to a times b raised to the x. Well, the a we know. It's 60. We don't know the b. And then the x is the 5. So we're using... Uh, I'm using this ordered pair, okay, to figure out what the B value or what the B value is, and then the 60 is your initial, the one I didn't highlight. So we're going to divide both sides by 60. So 45 divided by 60 is going to give you a value of 0 0.75 is equal to B to the fifth, and then you will have to take the fifth root of 0 0.75. So we know B is equal to the fifth root of 0 0.75, and we get a value approximately, actually, because it does go on for a while here, so it looks like it'll be irrational, but approximately 0 0.944. I'll round it up to three. I'll round it out to three places there. So now we have B and we have the initial. So on part A, let's go ahead and answer a couple questions here. The multiplier is approximately, and I'm going to use the squiggles just to indicate that it's not exact, it's approximately this value. And then what is the percent increase, or the percent, sorry, decrease? The percent decrease, because B is 0 0.944, we would want to take 1 minus 0 0.944 to get 0 0.0. Five, six. Now, we could have changed them back to a percent, but now we'll change this one to a percent, so it's a 5.6% decrease. So if you wanted to change it to a percent up here to 94.4%, and then take 100% minus 94.4% and get the 5.6%, that's fine too. Either one is fine. But we answer both questions, the multiplier and the percent uh, decrease. Part B wants us to find an exponential function that models the value of the stock starting from 2005. So we, uh, we have all the information we need, and since it says exponential function, I'm going to write it as f of x is equal to the initial, which was the $60. Our multiplier is approximately 0 0.944 raised to the x power. So that would represent the exponential function that models the situation. And then the last part on C, assuming that the decline of the value continues at the same rate, make a prediction for 2020. So 2020, remember the initial was 2005, so that would be a span of 15 years. So we want to do F of 15 is equal to 60 times 0 0.944 raised to the 15th power. Let's see what the value would be. Get a value of 25.28. So we can... Uh, make a prediction that the value would be worth, um, the stock would be worth $25.28 in 2020. And so make sure you answer that question. Question 118. Write an equation or system of equations to solve this problem. An adult ticket to the amusement park costs $24.95, and a child ticket costs $15.95. A group of 10 people paid $186.50 to enter the park. How many were adults? 
Um, so we need to write a, an equation or a system of equations to solve this problem. First off, what is it that we're trying to find? The question says how many um, were adults in terms of the tickets. So let's go ahead and write some let statements here. Let's say that let A equal the number of adult tickets or the cost. Well, the adult ticket to the amusement park cost $24.95. So it's not the cost, it's the number of adult tickets. And then we also have another one, which is the children's ticket. So we need to write another let statement. We'll say let C equal the, once again, not the cost, but the number of children tickets. Okay. Let's go say tickets. All right. And so let's see if we can write one or two equations here. We have two pieces of information. One, um, we know that there's a group of 10 people that went. So we could say that the number of adult tickets plus the number of children tickets would be equal to 10. And we also know the total cost. So if we have uh, $24.95 for an adult ticket, we can multiply those together to get the total adult cost. And then $15.95 for a children's ticket. So that'd be times C, and then the total is $186.50. So it looks like we're going to write a system of equations. We have two equations and two unknowns. Um, and now you can go ahead and solve. You can use elimination. It's set up for elimination. Uh, or you could use substitution where you'd have to solve probably this equation for either A or C, which is what I'm going to do because of all the decimals. Um, that way I don't have to deal with them. But uh, well, I shouldn't say I have, shouldn't have to deal with them. I'm going to have to work with them one way or another. But let's go ahead and solve for A. So A is equal to 10 minus C. So I'm going to replace the A value with 10 minus C. I have to use the distributive property. And let's see what happens. So we have $24.95 times 10. So that would be 200 $49.50 minus $24.95 times C. So we're distributing here plus the $15.95 C is equal to the 186.50. Go ahead and combine your like terms and we'll also subtract $249.50. To the other side and we'll also combine our like terms and so it looks like I'll get negative 9 C is equal to negative 63 divided by negative 9 and we get C is equal to 7 so that would be the number of children so we could easily plug that back into a equals 10 minus the number of children tickets which means we have three adults now the question only says how many were adults so that's the question I'm going to answer um, even though we know both, uh, we'll go ahead and answer just the number of adults. So we know there are three adult tickets. And so there you go. We know three adults entered the park. Question 19, or 119, solve each system of equation. So... The previous one was an application where we had to set up. These are just solving given the information. So the second equation is set up for y. So I'm going to go ahead and use substitution. 2x minus the quantity. Make sure you get that in parentheses there because you want to make sure you have to distribute the negative. So that would be minus x and then plus 7. Combine your like terms and then also subtract 7 to the other side. And that would give us x equals 2. Plug that back into your second equation. 2 minus 7 is negative 5. So since we are just solving a general system of equations, we're going to write it as an ordered pair, 2 comma negative 5. And on to B. B, we're going to use elimination. So I'm going to add the Y to the other side. We need to get these set up so that the X's and the Y's are lined up. So i got negative 4X plus Y equals 5. And then my second equation, since I added y, I'm going to get 2x plus y equals negative 13. So those are going to cancel right there. So if you see, I'm going to do some circling, but then I'm going to erase. You have your x's lined up, your y's lined up, your equal sign lined up, and then your constants lined up. And that's what you want to have when you're solving 
uh, using elimination. So it looks like I can take one of these equations and multiply by negative 1. That would give me negative 2x minus y equals positive 13. And I'm going to eliminate the y value. So you can see that the y's are opposite of each other. I get 2x equals 18. Divide by 2, x is equal 9. And I just realized I didn't carry down my negative, so I need to fix this. This would be negative 4x, which means, let me erase this. So it would actually be negative 6x equals 18. And so now when I divide by negative 6, I get x equals negative 3. So sorry about that. Take that, plug it back into one of your equations. Just plug it into the second one here. We have 2. Uh, I'm going to plug it into the original 2x equals negative y minus 13. So it would be 2 times negative 3 equals negative y minus 13, negative 6. Add the 13. So I get 7 is equal to negative y. Don't forget to divide by negative 1. y is negative 7. So our answer is negative 3 comma negative 7. That's the point of intersection of the two lines. That solves the system. Question 120. Below are several situations that can be described using exponential functions. They represent a small sampling of the situations where quantities grow or decay by a constant percentage over equal periods of time. For each situation, A through D, find an appropriate unit of time, find the multiplier that should be used, identify the initial value, and write an exponential equation in the form y equals a times b raised to the x. That represents the growth or decay. So, part A. A house purchased for 120000 has an annual appreciation of 6%. So the appropriate time uh, says annual, so that would be represented in years. So that would be the appropriate time frame. Uh, it wants to know what the multiplier is. So since it's appreciating at 6%, that would be 1.06 as the multiplier. Uh, identify the initial value. The initial value is 120 thousand dollars that's what the house was purchased for and then to write an equation that represents the growth or decay and this one's a growth so we have y equals the initial value of 120,000 times your multiplier of 1.06 raised to the x power b the number of bacteria presented in a colony is 180 at noon and it increases at a rate of 22 percent per Hour. So time would be hours. Uh, the percent is 22% increase, so that's 1.22. The initial value is 180. And then your equation is y equals the initial of 180, 180 times your multiplier raised to the power of x. Part C. The value of a car with an annual purchase, or an, sorry, the value of a car with an initial purchase price of $12,250 depreciates by 11% each year. So it depreciates. It goes down. The time frame is years. The uh, depreciates 11%. So that's 100% minus 11%, uh, which would be equal to 89%. So as a multiplier, that's 0 0.89. Uh, the initial value of the car is 12000 250 and therefore our equation is y equals uh, the initial 12,250 times the multiplier of 0 0.89 it is decreasing so that number is less than 1 greater than 0 uh, 0 0.89 raised to the x power and the last one d an investment of thousand dollars earns 6% annual interest compounded monthly so our time frame on this one would be months. 6% uh, annual interest rate, but it is per month. And so we have to take the um, interest rate that you have, and that would be 0 0.06 and divide it into 12 months. And if you take 0 0.06 divided by 12, you get 0 0.005. So that's what's happening per month, so therefore your multiplier um, is increasing, so it is 1.005, and then your initial is 1,000, 
So therefore, your equation would be y equals 1,000, that's your initial, times your multiplier 1.005 raised to the x power. Question 121. Write an equation for the line that passes through the two points. So if you're given two points, you can either kind of start to set up your table, you can use your slope formula, but you need to know what your initial is and your rate of change. So this would be negative 5, 4, and 3, negative 2. So you need to find the difference between your x's and the difference between your y's. And so you can look at it this way. You can also use your slope formula, 4 minus negative 5, or sorry, oops, let's try that again, 4 minus negative 2, change of y, and then over your change of x, negative 5 minus negative 3. So this would give us 6 over, uh, that's, I made a negative 3 here, should just be 5 minus 3, so 6 over negative 8 which would reduce to negative 3 fourths. And that's the same thing you'll get from the table. We need to find the initial, though, so we need to plug in the information into our equation. I'll use the point 3, negative 2. So y is negative 2. My slope is negative 3 fourths, or negative 0 0.75, times x plus b. So it looks like we will get um, negative 9 fourths. And you can have that as a decimal, too. doesn't matter. It is a nice decimal. It does terminate, so that would be fine. So add 9 fourths or 2 uh, and 1 fourth, 2.25, and therefore we will get a B value of 1 fourth or 0 0.25. And so our equation, Y equals M, which is negative 3 fourths, X minus or plus 1 fourth, okay? If you did decide to write that in decimal form, this one it would be okay because the decimal does terminate. It's not a repeating decimal. So if you chose to write it like this, that would be perfectly fine as well. Either one of those is fine. All right, on question 122, this goes back to chapter 6, and it goes through the whole process of creating a scatter plot, a line of regression. Uh, it looks at your... Residual plot and has you interpret all that stuff. Go through and do all that. If you have a calculator, do it. And then just look at your closure problems in the back. Um, the answer keys are provided. So look at question 122 and just double check to make sure that you were able to find all that information as you went through it. Question 123 in problem 6-80, Marissa looked at a different effect of the weather. She studied a linear association between the attendance at an amusement park and the temperature. Marissa made the residual plot at the right. Was a linear model appropriate? Why or why not? So on part A, since it's providing the residual plot, um, are the points scattered or do you see a pattern? And that's going to tell you whether it's appropriate or not. But because the residual plot shows a clear pattern or U-shaped, a curve regression model would have been better. So a linear model would not be appropriate because you can see the, dat the data forms kind of a, a U-shaped graph there. Part B, Marissa's data follows. She rounded attendance to the nearest 100. Uh, make a scatter plot of the data. What kind of model might better represent Marissa, Marissa's data and why? So you could create the, the scatter plot. Um, so once you create the scatter plot, you'll, sh you'll see more of a maybe U-shaped graph. So a quadratic model would probably fit it better. And then on part C, it says fit a quadratic model to the data. What attendance, uh, what attendance does your model predict for a 95-degree Fahrenheit day? Use the appropriate precision. So once again, the only way you're going to be able to answer part C is if you used your calculator to do a quadratic re, um, model and then use that to, to make the prediction. So I will show you that on part B, if you do plug in the information, you will get a model that looks like this. A is equal to negative 0. 083t squared plus 14.2t minus 579. So then when you get to part C, if you want to make that prediction, you should be able to plug in the value for t, which is the temperature. So you would plug in 95 square it plus 14.2 times 95 minus 579, and that will give you um, what the attendance that model predicts for a 95-degree day. And we get a value of 20.925,
and don't think that is only 20 people. The attendance is in thousands, so that's approximately 20,925 people, but it does say uh, somewhere up here, they were rounding to the nearest 100, so we would just do 20,900 people. And so I just said 20,900 people are predicted to attend on a 95 degree Fahrenheit day.